There are two types of biblically illiterate people, but first let me tell you why people are biblically illiterate. Now, it might just be that someone is new to the faith. They're wanting to learn about Jesus Christ and the truth of the Bible, and they simply haven't uh, studied the information. They haven't heard the information, so they don't understand what the Bible says. Then there are those people who have been in church for whatever period of time, and they're hearing a message which isn't the true message of the Bible, um, and they're being taught a certain message, so they're believing that. Um, they don't know what they're not being taught as well from the pulpit, so they remain biblically illiterate. Um, and they're filtering their understanding of the Bible through those messages. So there can be really um, a couple of reasons why people are biblically illiterate, but then there are two types of people that are biblically illiterate. Let me explain. So you have the first type of person that is open to the truth of what the Bible says, of actually wanting to know what the Bible actually says. And then there are those people who are content with what they already believe. And they actually don't want to know the truth of what the Bible says. Either it's a cognitive dissonance or they like the message that they're being told. But for whatever the reason is, when they're presented with the truth of the Bible objectively, uh, they are resistant to hearing it. And these could be people that have been in church for all their life. So there are those who are open and there are those who are closed. And I'm not even talking about secondary issues here. People can agree to disagree on secondary issues. People that have studied these issues in depth and have come to different conclusions. I'm talking here about the primary message of the gospel. The, the, the primary gospel message and understanding that... Um, the realities of the transgression of the law, of being under the judgment of God, um, recognizing a salvation that comes through Jesus Christ and a, a repentance of sin and the transformation that occurs at the born again experience and um, a call to discipleship, a call to um, dying to self, to taking up one's cross, to not looking to um, the blessings in terms of things working out the way that we desire them to in this life. Um, they might at times, but they also might not. Uh, we can see the lives of the apostles. They lost everything, including their lives for the spread of the gospel. Um, so you can only lead a horse to water. All that you can do is to present the truth of the Bible to them, to actually go in and objectively show them this, this is what the Bible says here, here, here. What you're believing and what you're being taught says this these two things don't align with one another, um, which one are you going to choose to believe? And those who are open to the truth will say, okay, look, I am looking objectively at what the Bible is saying and uh, what I have been taught or what I have believed is um, not exactly in alignment with the truth. There may be elements of the truth, but it's not um, really in alignment with, with, with what the truth uh, actually teaches and the emphasis of that message. Um, I remember an experience in, in my previous church where I was getting uh, frustrated towards the end of my time there and I was speaking to a friend in the church who wasn't really all that biblically literate and um, I was talking about all of these things and laying them out and all that he said to me was, oh, you know, we just, we just need to trust our pastors. We just need to trust they know what they're doing. And when I heard that, I thought to myself, wow, that's so dangerous. We, we need to be... Um, Bereans that are searching the scriptures. We're searching through the scriptures. Does this align with, with what we're being taught, with what we're hearing? Does it align? And, and if it does, praise God, fantastic. If it doesn't, then, then throw it out. Um, that's what we're called to do. And that's how a lot of the cults uh, control people because um, they set up this structure where they're hearing information through a certain filter, through, through an organization, and, and that sort of, uh, that information becomes like an authoritative in interpretation and um, people are manipulated and discouraged from even questioning that. 
um, seen as undermining the leadership and the authority and all those sort of stuff. And it's very easy to control people. Um, it's like with the Catholic Church, with um, it, 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 before the Reformation, you, people don't have the Bible in their hands. They don't want people to have the Bible in their hands um, because they don't want people to know what the Bible says. And oftentimes, uh, these uh, churches today even just uh, themselves are simply ignorant and they're blind guides leading the blind. So the point of this message is that we need to examine everything that we hear. We need to filter it through the lens of the Word of God and we need to be prepared to um, reject those things that don't align with the Bible and uh, to accept the things that do and to adjust our understanding in, in any way so that it does align with the Bible. That's what we're called to do. Otherwise, people uh, will just willfully remain biblically illiterate. There's a lot of learning that many of us have to go through in the faith journey. But if we are committed to the truth of the word of God, if our allegiance and our fidelity is to the truth of the word of God above any church, above any pastor, above uh, any preacher, above anything, then we will be led in truth. But our heart has to be in that right place.